the angular momentum of an isolated system uh, will not change if there's no, uh, well, since it's isolated, so there's no external torques acting on the system. Um, in the uh, horizontal plane, then, if I set myself in rotation, then in principle, if I do not introduce a torque that would change that, um, that, that would cause a torque in that plane, then my total angular momentum should remain fixed. Um, so there, therefore, uh, I would need to get myself rotating. I would actually need to uh, provide some torque. And I can do that with my leg on the ground by pushing. And, once, and any uh, figure skater or any other kind of athlete that would uh, choose to try to put themselves in rotation somehow needs to uh, provide some external torque on their system to get them rotating. Once they get going, however, uh, then if no other torques are acting on the system, their total angular momentum will remain the same. All right, so when I get myself rotating, then we see that I, I get a certain amount of angular momentum. And aside from the small amount of friction that would exist in the bearings, then in principle, my rotation rate shouldn't change. All right, now, angular momentum is a combination of both the moment of inertia and the rotational rate. And so if I can change my uh, moment of inertia, which I can by uh, changing the mass distribution with respect to the axis of rotation, uh, then by changing that moment of inertia, I can also subsequently change the rotation rate. So if my moment of inertia is high, my rotation rate could be low. Then by decreasing my moment of inertia, then the rotational rate will increase. Um, to sort of increase my moment of inertia somewhat, I have a couple of balls here. And if I hold my arms out at arm length, then I have a large moment of inertia. And then as I bring my arms in, then my moment of inertia should go down. And by angular momentum conservation, then the rotation rate should go up. 